Jeremy Blum here, back with another episode of Tech Bits. This week I'm going to be talking a little bit about SLI and Crossfire, comparing the two and uh, giving you guys a little history. This was a request made by Lo uh, YouTube user Lotus Piano. So, first a little history um, on SLI and Crossfire. SLI came out in 2004 originally. Um, it's, an, uh, it's an NVIDIA technology. And uh, SLI stands for Scalable Link Interface. It's basically just taking the, the graphics processing power from two video cards and combining it. Um, how SLI works is you just have two, car, two or more cards and you combine them using a bridge cable um, made by NVIDIA. So, a brief little timeline of SLI. In 2006, NVIDIA released the first dual GPU card, um, so two processors on one card, so you could have a total of a quad GPU configuration by SLIing two um, dual GPU cards. 2007, triple SLI first came out with 8,000 series cards. This allows you to have three independent GPUs uh, working together. 2008, uh, NVIDIA acquired Physics, physics from uh, Aegea, uh, it'll, and um, they implemented it into their SLI so that you can either run physics processing on um, one of your GPUs, both of your GPUs, or distributed across all of them. Um, on to Crossfire. Crossfire is an ATI technology. First came out in 2005, a little bit after NVIDIA, and it's basically been through three major revisions. So I'll, I'll just go through those quickly. The uh, first revision it required one master card and one slave card from the same series. The master card had um, five extra imaging chips on it that would be used to take the information from the slave card and combine it into one image before sending it to the monitor. Um, this wasn't a great configuration. It was very difficult to get the master cards. Um, but it did work. Um, and it also required a DVI-Y cable uh, at the back of your computer that connected the DVI port to each of the cards and combined the signals before they went out to the monitor. The second revision of Crossfire um, no longer required a master card for most of the configurations, but it did still require a, that Y dongle in, in the back of the computer, um, which SLI has never required. Um, but SLI has the little, bri the little um, ribbon cable bridge that attaches the two cards. Version 2 of Crossfire does not just have that Y cable. The rest of the communication was done over the PCI Express bus. Um, the current version of Crossfire, Crossfire X, um, doesn't have any master configurations, um, no master slave cards, and uh, it doesn't, no longer requires that Y cable at the back of the computer. It uses a ribbon connector just like NVIDIA's SLI uh, technology always had. And it can support up to four video cards, um, each one with one GPU, um, assuming you have the, the chips that can support four video cards. All right, so next I'll talk about a little bit the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, disadvantages of SLI, and then advantages and disadvantages of Crossfire. Um, advantages of SLI. First of all, it works on any SLI certified motherboard, which of course makes sense. This is basically all the modern NVIDIA chipsets. And now, um, starting with X58, it should be working on Intel chipsets as well. Um, before the X58 chipset came out just a short while ago, um, you cannot do SLI on any Intel chipsets. Second, and one of the most unique features about SLI is how you can split the workload between cards. There's uh, three possible ways that you can do it. Uh, the first way is you can have each card do a portion of the frame you're trying to render. So, let's say you have a screen and you have um, the top half of the screen is just the sky, and the bottom half of the screen is um, a bunch of enemies and cars and you're running across the beach or something like that. Um, and there's a lot more processing required for the bottom half of the screen. And instead of necessarily just splitting it 50-50, it will split the workload um, symmetrically. So since the bottom half of the screen is going to require a lot more processing power, um, maybe the bottom 30% of the screen will go to one graphics card and the upper 70% will go to the other graphics card. Um, geometrically, they're not equal. But um, in terms of the amount of processing that has to be done on each, they are. The second way SLI can do rendering is it can take turns rendering frames. So one does one frame, then the card does the next frame, and they switch off. And then the last way is actually has nothing to do with frame rates. You can split the anti-aliasing workload between uh, however many SLI cards you have. Um, you, don't, you don't generally get any frame rate increase from this, but the image quality improves significantly. And uh, lastly, hybrid SLI. Um, from NVIDIA can be used to boost their performance uh, if you have a um, this, this first came out in laptops a little while ago and it's now becoming available on desktop um, chipsets basically if you have an onboard graphics processor and an offboard um, video card you can 
balance the load between those two, shut one or the other off to save battery power or increase performance, or you can combine the two of them, um, which is a really nice feature that's just just starting to come out now. Um, disadvantages of SLI. First of all, um, only the ports on one of the cards will function, so if you have two cards, you can only use uh, the two DVI ports on one of your cards. You can't use all four DVI ports, um, so you can only have two monitors, not four. That's because the second graphics card is not being used to output. Um, it's just being used as extra graphics horsepower. Next, uh, if you're using two cards that have different speeds and memory sizes, the faster card will reduce its speed and decrease its memory size to meet that of the slower card. Um, so you're always going to be limited by the slowest card you have in the system. Um, next, both cards must be the same series to work together in SLI. That makes sense. They both have to be the, uh, the same kind of GPU. Uh, the motherboard, of course, has to have support for SLI. As I mentioned, that's most NVIDIA chipsets, and uh, uh, now X the Intel X58 chipset supports it as well. Um, and lastly, with SLI, this is true with Crossfire as well, you're not always going to see a performance benefit. It all depends on how the, how the application is designed to use SLI. Um, some applications will be written to use it more effectively than others, and that's just the way it is. So some will actually see more advantage from uh, just a higher-powered single graphics card. All right, on to Crossfire. Um, advantages of Crossfire. It works on many of the Intel chipsets that SLI doesn't, so anything up to X58, all the modern ones at least. Um, it can support up to four graphics cards, which I mentioned before, on, a, on chipsets that support four PCI Express slots. It now also has a hybrid solution, like uh, hybrid SLI that I mentioned before. That's also just starting to come out. And um, some of the uh, applications of Crossfire don't require a bridge, some of the older ones, which is kind of nice, but not really a big deal at all. Um, and okay, on to disadvantages of Crossfire. First of all, it has a lot of the same disadvantages of SLI because they're just inherent in multi-video card systems. The first of which is um, same thing. You can't have, you can't use all four ports if you have two two cards. Um, you can only use the uh, ports on one of them. Uh, same thing with the speed and memory sizes. It's always going to reduce to the speed and memory size of a slower card. Um, both cards have to be um, a similar model number, same series, just like with SLI, in order to work together. Uh, the chipset has to have support for Crossfire, um, and also just like SLI, you're not always going to see a performance benefit um, depending on how the application is coded. Um, specifically to Crossfire, you're, um, some games don't have Crossfire pro uh, profiles, so you, the rendering mode that you're going to get from your multi-GPU setup is not necessarily going to be optimal. Um, and um, that's basically as, as far as the disadvantages of Crossfire. Mostly the same stuff as SLI. Okay, so wrap up. Just to wrap up, basically they're both really good um, solutions. NVIDIA and ATI both make really great cards right now. The, the, um, the new cards manufactured by both of them are really neck and neck. They're both very good. Um, same thing is true with, with SLI and Crossfire. You can't really go wrong either way. They're both, they both work out very well. It basically just depends on whether or not your chipset supports it, um, how much power you have, how much, um, how much video processing power you need, and um, the last thing you might want to consider when you're choosing between them is what games you play, because some games will work better with SLI or will work better with Crossfire, depending on how the game is written. And you can just basically Google any game. Excuse me. You can basically just uh, Google any game and figure out which one it works better with. Um, so you know, just check out your games in advance, see what you play most, and and uh, decide based on that. All right. If you have any extra questions, uh, please visit ultimatecomputers.net and uh, check out that site. You can register for the forum for free and. Uh, uh, ask any questions that you might have. Um, and that's it for this ep this week's episode of Tech Bits. Next week I should be coming to you with a full HD broadcast. I'm getting my new uh, video camera. Very excited about that. 1080p. Um, so yeah, I will see you next week hopefully. And uh, thanks for watching this episode of Tech Bits. Bye.